Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Arizona Pain Network, where we bring you anything and everything educational for pain management. Today the topic is the basics of platelet-rich plasma therapy, which is also known for short as PRP therapy. PRP therapy is a very exciting procedure because it uses one's own growth factors, platelets, and stem cells to regenerate damaged tissue instead of just masking pain. Previously, it's been used for many years in dentistry, urology, ophthalmology, cardiovascular surgery, and other fields, and recently it's becoming much more popular in musculoskeletal medicine. And the basic definition is a volume of plasma that has a platelet count and concentration above the baseline of whole blood. Well, regenerative medicine, when you look at the field, it really does break the mold of conventional treatments. Traditional treatments include the likes of cortisone that do work very well, but they don't regenerate any of your tissue. They just mask pain and act as a proverbial band-aid where a regenerative treatment can actually repair the damage. Well, what are the indications for PRP? Well, they're growing. You have treatments uh, is indicated for tennis elbow and other tendonitis conditions such as rotator cuff tendonitis, Achilles tendonitis, um, knee tendonitis, and then arthritis conditions, either in the knee, the shoulder, the hip, um, even other areas like the spine, the SI joint, and then also ligament injuries uh, such as you see uh, like the medial collateral ligament um, and other areas. Athletes are using PRP like crazy these days because it has such a low risk and it's not banned by any of the professional sports leagues. So you have people like Rafael Nadal, Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant's had it a few times, and the Plenty of the Los Angeles Dodgers, there's a nice article in the LA Times um, last year about how many of the Dodgers have been using it. And then people like Brandon Roy, who you see in the center there. Well, how is PRP performed? It's actually a fairly simplistic type procedure. It's an outpatient, involves a simple blood draw. The blood is then put into a centrifuge machine, which spins, spins, spins it for 15 minutes. And then that turns it into three layers, platelet poor plasma, platelet rich plasma, and then red blood cells. So what you end up with is you take about 30 to 60 cc's and then by the time you end up with this you get about 5 cc's and then that immediately gets injected into the area that has the problem shoulder, knee, hip, what have you. What it does is it creates inflammation and then it will call in the body's stem cells to help as well. So it promotes inflammation and actually in can increase pain for a couple days as it does that. Inflammation is the first stage of healing. Professional sports leagues have not banned the use of PRP therapy. In fact, the World Anti-Doping Association reversed their ban on it because they said, quote, lack of any current evidence concerning the use of these methods for the purposes of performance enhancement. So it works well for healing, but it's not considered a performance enhancing drug. A few studies, the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine last year, showed that in a knee study in 22 patients, over 80% showed no change in arthritis at one year, and they looked at multiple MRIs to show that. Pain scores went down significantly. Functional and clinical scores increased at both six months and one year. This was just with one injection. Most patients end up needing two to three injections over a period of six months or so. So there's been plenty of basic science studies looking at PRP favorably. There are no large clinical study, studies in humans as of yet. There was a 30-patient study out of South Florida looking at PRP for tennis elbow, and well over 90% of patients were able to avoid the need for an operation. These are patients who had tried everything but an operation, and PRP worked great. More studies are needed to prove the effectiveness of PRP and to research the best ways to standardize the treatment's preparation. So when you look at the risks and benefits, it's, a, it's your own blood. So there's a low risk there. It's an outpatient procedure. You might get increased pain for 48 hours due to the inflammation it sparks up. It might take a series of two to three injections which are not covered by insurance. Studies that are small have shown excellent outcomes with very little downside and you have a very minor risk of infection. The top pain management clinics in Arizona Arizona Pain Specialist. They offer comprehensive pain management with stem cell therapies, uh, board certified pain doctors offering both medical and interventional pain management, chiropractic treatment, physical rehab, acupuncture, spinal decompression therapy. They accept over 50 insurances at five locations and they've won the Patient's Choice Award five years in a row. Amazing. Call today at 602-507-6550 
and visit us on the web at preferredpaincenter.com. I'm Dr. David Green with the Arizona Pain Network. Your pain stops here.